Usually, 140 over 90 is the cutoff for determining high blood pressure or hypertension, but according to a new study published in Annals of Internal Medicine, blood pressure between 120 to 139 over 80 to 89 may be putting many young adults at risk. Study author Dr. Mark Pletcher says there's a link between prehypertension and atherosclerosis, or hardening of the arteries. What we found was that low levels in blood pressure uh, that we define as prehypertension during young adulthood um, are associated with calcification in the coronary arteries later in life. And uh, calcium is a marker of atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries, or atherosclerotic plaques, that can lead to heart attacks later. Researchers analyzed blood pressure measurements of more than 3,500 young adults between the ages of 18 and 30 for 20 years. 46-year-old Terrell Melton says he learned how to stay healthy by participating in the study. It taught me how to take care of myself a little bit better, uh, how to um, know right things to eat, how to uh, exercising, things of that nature. Uh, it really kind of opened my eyes. Nearly 20% of the study participants developed prehypertension before the age of 35. Prehypertension was most common in patients who were black, male, overweight, and of low socioeconomic status. This is one of those mysteries that uh, we're, we're trying hard to figure out why people with lower education and income tend to have more disease in general and heart disease in particular. Um, and developing prehypertension early. Researchers recommend optimizing blood pressure early in adulthood by making lifestyle modifications, including exercise, diet, and weight control, with the goal of keeping blood pressure below 120 over 80. Blood pressure levels that are less than 140 over 90, that magical cut point for hypertension, are commonly ignored in the doctor's office. Um, but we think that if your blood pressure is um, over 120 over 80, that that appears to be a risk factor for heart disease later in life and shouldn't be ignored. On behalf of the Annals of Internal Medicine, this is Jim Lawrence.